Sometimes she gets herself all hooked up with some serious shit, you know, and Tammy has to straighten her out uh, because because Lois works for a university and she gets, you know, all serious and stuff. But Lois got invited to participate in this research project uh, called Performance Matters. Okay, now what that means is performance matters. We know that performance matters. It's mattered to us and it will continue to matter to us. But it also means the matter of performance. You know how these academics are. They like to put these words together. I'm telling you, they like to confuse a really crystal clear issue. Whenever they get to us. But anyway, so they've been running this research project for some time. And um, it is over two years. In the second year, they were doing something called trashing performance. Now, I don't know why, but they asked Lois if she'd do something for this part of the work research. And so Lois said, yeah, as long as I can bring my friend Tammy. So Lois asked Tammy, and Tammy said, yeah, as long as I can bring my friend Amy LeMay, Carmelita Tropicana, and Bird LeBert. I'm going to get all these people together, and I'm going to create something called a Femme Museum. I'm going to bring together all the influences that have made us into the fantastic women performers that we are and put it out there so that other people can look at it. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's not enough of us out there to look at. I like to appropriate or reappropriate the museum and to turn it into something that's all about being women, uh, not just that once in a while you might find a woman in a museum. And so it's all really about what it means to, to be female, to be feminine, to be femme, and all of those different definitions. And we've had lots of conversations about all of that, and it all means different stuff to all of us. But I think one of the things that we all have in common is that we use the feminist and the feminine in, in the sort of hyper, its hyperness in terms of making our own performances, and we use it in very, very different ways. So we're coming together to talk about this and to make this thing happen, which is going to happen in London in October, the end of October. There's going to be a whole long symposium where they're going to be talking a lot of serious shit, and then at the end of the day, they're going to be doing a lot of trash. And so we're going to be able to be a part of that, and we're real, real, real excited. So what we want to do today is several things, and the first thing we want to do is kind of talk about what we're thinking about in front of y'all because we're femmes, and we talk better when we have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing we want to talk about right now is this idea of muses. So our task is going to be to each of us come up with three muses um, that we will create some kind of representation for, and then those muses will occupy this femme museum. And so that's where our task is at the moment. So I'm going to just open it up to you guys, and if we can't think of anything to say, we'll ask them to help us, mm -hmm. um, about what is a muse and what, what comes to you, what came to your mind when this project sort of, sort of came at you as it did. Well, I think it's important to remember that muse is a verb and a noun. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you do, and it's something that you can be, or have an object of affection that is a muse. So, I started musing about that, really. Um, and it's really difficult. It has been difficult to kind of think of three, you know, whittle it down, really, to, to ideally three muses that have influenced me. And I know that, you know, we've talked about this, and um, it's, it's been tough. I think sometimes what, what ends up happening as well is that you have muses there that you don't kind of know about until they come out and they pop and they stand in front of you. Like um, Diana Dawes in The Worm That Turned, you know, she was always in the back of my mind, but when I put the Fen Police together and I just realized like what a huge impact that program had on me as a, as, as a child. 
And then the, the other thing I, I was thinking about um, with the muse as well is, is that when the muse does actually visit you in terms of artistic inspiration, you know sometimes like when you have an idea and it just comes and it's almost like, like there is almost like a feeling like there is someone with you, you know what I mean? And all you have to do is just spit it out into whatever your medium is and it's like a really beautiful uh, experience as well so i think it's uh, it's capturing a little bit of that artistic magic i love that, i love that though what both you and amy just said about the um first of all the the, the, the experience the visceral the visceral experience of what happens when we feel the muse i mean i think that some of the conversations we've had have been, has been external we've been looking out you know, you know dolly parton for instance, mm -hmm. might be considered one of my muses. Yes. <laughs> and in fact, she is my muse. And what I love about Dolly is uh, how smart she is. Mm -hmm. How blonde and how smart. And that combination of that blondness and that intellect just really thrills me. And I love the things that she says. You know, like, you know, for instance, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is when she's on stage and she was being heckled. And not really heckled, but somebody from the crowd goes, I love you, Dolly. And, and she turns around up into the balcony and says, I love you too. But I told you to wait in the car. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a view, so I'm telling you. <laughs> so I think it is memories that you have that are very, you know, we were talking about the, uh, how do you call it, Nan? Yeah, Nan. Nan, uh, to me it's Minan. a, Minan. <laughs> to me that's like a, a. Nan means grandma in English. Yeah. <laughs> I always think of the Indian bread, but it's okay. <laughs> Me, it's very hard for me, you know, we have only five, you know, vowels. A, E, O, U. No, it's hard, baby. It's hard. Okay, so we have to say it again. Yeah. 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 Uh, I in in college I was at my house and my uh, and this boy who was after me you know came to visit and my grandmother opened the door and then you know passed you know let him in while I was in the bedroom and she when I came out was in the sofa reclining like, <laughs> <laughs> like, she was so amazing and instead of me getting upset I'm going like Go, go, Mima, go. <laughs> because it was like such, and she really was reclining, and I think to myself, oh my God, all through art, there's this reclining, you know, in Goya, the Maha Desnuda, the Maha, you know, I'm glad that she was not the naked, not the nude. <laughs> <laughs> she had clothes on, okay? <laughs> but, but it was that kind of odalisque that was like, <laughs> and I think like, wow, go. So that, that, that coquetry, you know, has always been, you know, very prevalent in, in the Carmelita spirit. We keep referring back to having had conversations before. Now, we don't want y'all to feel left out. But because what, what, the way this happened is we were having some conversations in London, just the three of us, because Carmelita wasn't able to come. And uh, then Bird said, I might be coming to New York. And, and Amy said, I think I might have to come to New York or New Jersey to see your family. So I said, oh, let's do this. Let's, let's get together. Let's talk. Let, let's set it up. Let's be in public. Let's invite people's participation. Um, but since we were all here, we decided to have an away day. So we went to a place called... Keensburg. You talk about that. Yeah, Keensburg, which um, you won't see on television if you watch Jersey Shore. Because <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a little local uh, boardwalk for, it's just for local people, really. And uh, it's kind of edgy, working class little town with um, original 1930s um, uh, fun fair. So all the original kitty rides and Ferris wheel and everything is really beautiful place. So and yeah, we it's had special. We have foot long hot dogs, foot long hot dogs, cheese fries, and yeah, <laughs> and we had beers. beers. And on the way back, <laughs> I called Peggy. She said, "What'd y'all do?" I said, "We had a hot dog and a beer on the boardwalk." And she said, "I thought this was a fam outing. Why didn't you have champagne and oyster?" <laughs> <laughs> and Bird very very conveniently said. Well, uh, but there was no budget to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs>